So I hope people had a chance to think about what we did last class and think about this mutual exclusion problem that Dijkstra stated. So we're going to continue with that in this class. The other things that we're going to do all build on that. So we're going to look at Dijkstra's solution, and we may also get to look at Lamport's solution by the end of the class today. We'll also, in addition to these theoretical solutions that are more abstract, we'll look at some practical solutions as to how you actually solve this problem on modern processors. Because the scenario that modern processors face is not exactly like the one that was stated by Dijkstra. So before getting into that, I want to remind you there is the hackathon this weekend. I hope some of you are doing and will we'll do interesting things for. It's certainly it's fine with me if you do something for the hackathon that ends up being what you use for the project in this class. I am not sure whether the hackathon organizers what the actual rules are, so make sure you follow the hackathon rules, but it's perfectly fine with me if something that you do for the hackathon ends up also being useful for this class. The other thing I want to mention about the hackathon is they have a keynote speaker Sunday. The, the last one is Steve Huffman. So Steve graduated almost 10 years ago, I think 2005 or 2006, was a computer science student here. So this is Steve. This is from a couple years ago when Rice Hall opened. I think that was the last time he was in town, at least the last time I know of him being in town. You can see he's visiting our lab, and the, the, this is Jonathan Burkett, who I think at the time was a second or third year student. He's now a grad student in CMU. And so Steve came by our lab, and this was the day they had sort of an open house, and all the people that were here for the building opening were coming by labs, and the students were talking about what they were doing. And Steve is a very sort of modest, humble guy, so, so Jonathan does his usual. So he's talking about the work he's doing, making web applications more secure. And he's you know, asked people, oh, do you know what a web application is? And Steve's sort of like, yeah, sort of. And so um, Jonathan's sort of explaining SQL and how web applications work with databases and stuff. And after about five minutes of that, I finally let them know who this is. So, so Steve you know, created Reddit, and Hipmunk was the technical lead on both of those. So he actually does know a little bit about web applications, but is a very, very nice, humble guy. So I hope most of you will be able to get to his talk Sunday. I don't know if you have to be participating in the hackathon completely to go to his talk, but hopefully you can um, either do that or at least get to his talk if not. The other story I want to tell you about, Steve, since you're thinking about your project ideas, I hope most of you have good ideas what to do for your project already. I want to tell you about the project Steve did with, when he was in my class, and this was in a security class where they had a project that was most of the semester so much longer time than what you have for your project. And the project that Steve was <coughs> claiming to be doing was this one. So they're talking about building some kind of game that uses cryptography. It's the kind of project that doesn't sound that exciting and that I would usually try to talk students out of. And I did sort of try to talk their group out of it. And you would expect someone with the capability of starting Reddit to have a much more creative idea for a project, so this is kind of disappointing. But it turned out this was actually his decoy project. So they went through the whole semester, and we had like several meetings during the semester, you know, both where they had to submit proposals and meet with me to talk about what they're doing for their project. And this whole thing was just a decoy. What his real project was, was investigating the security of my home Wi-Fi network. So he, he and his teammates were sneaking around under my deck, trying to listen to my Wi-Fi network and see how secure it was and break into things. So that was their, their real project. It's a little embarrassing what they found, because my router, I hadn't changed the default password, so they didn't have a hard time breaking in. But uh, The conclusion of their work was, you should probably change the default password on your router. <laughs> Uh, but there, there were other, other interesting things they learned. They also found that our neighborhood watch will chase people that look suspicious, but not once they get outside the neighborhood. I don't know if that's, that's a good conclusion or not. So there are a couple lessons about this. You can maybe ask, ask Steve's opinion. It might be different lessons than the ones that I would draw from it. But the, the first is, unlike for that class where the project lasted most of the semester, you only have about three weeks from when you submit your project idea today to the end of the class when it's due. So don't submit something that seems like a decoy project 
I will give you the benefit of the doubt if you submit something that seems really boring and uninteresting that you are submitting a decoy project, but we don't have, really have time for you to spend your time on a decoy project. So try to submit something that will not seem like a decoy project to me. If that was a security class, I was a little more lenient about whether people can break into my house or hang around near my house. You do not have permission to do that for this class. This is not a security class, so don't try to break into my house or, or any of my computing systems either, at least not without permission. But you should definitely try to use that as some kind of model for what might be a creative and interesting project to do, rather than doing the kind of generic thing that they were doing for their decoy project. Whatever stage you're in, and hopefully you're at a stage where you do have an idea that is what you want to work on, and you've got a good justification for that, if you don't have a real clear idea, it's better to submit that you're, you don't really know what to do and these are the kinds of things you're thinking of than to make something up which is not what you actually want to do. So hopefully you will either already are at the stage where you know what you want to do or in the next 11 and a quarter hours we'll get to that state.